Here I will be briefly discussing about post-transcriptional modifications, okay? And let's go back to the reason why I need to discuss something like this. When I was discussing the overview of the central dogma, I did mention that the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that transcription for prokaryotes happens in the cytosol, whereas for eukaryotes, it happens in the nucleus. Now, another thing is that eukaryotes have to do post-transcriptional modifications and prokaryotes do not need to do that. That is because if I have here the product of transcription in eukaryotes, which is actually called the HNRNA, that HNRNA has problems. What problems? That is, if I go here, okay. If we try to get this and imagine this yellow thing right here is the RNA. If this RNA goes out directly from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, it might have the tendency to encounter a bunch of nucleases or enzymes that break down nucleic acids. In other words, if I have my mRNA just like this, in this form, so this is what we call the HNRNA or the heterogeneous nuclear RNA, it is easily destroyed. It could be hydrolyzed either starting from the five prime end or from the three prime end. And that's not a good thing because it's, it's gonna be ironic like, you spend so much time making that RNA and then you just let it out to be destroyed. That doesn't make sense. So therefore it's clear that we need to do some modifications to it, especially on these parts where they could be broken down such that we could protect it from the nucleases in the cytosol in the context of eukaryotes, okay? Now, how do we do that? It's actually the case we're in. First, before protection, you have to know that in mRNA, we have regions called exons, which are the letter E's right here. So here I actually made it this diagonal line. And then the other ones, okay, which have the opposite diagonal lines are the introns. The exons are the coding regions and the introns are the non-coding regions. By coding, it means that these exons are the ones that need to be translated or converted to protein later. We need these regions. We do not want them to go away. Whereas the introns, they are not coding. We don't need them. It's not part of what we want to become a protein later. So these things have to be removed. And in order to do what we want to do, which is to maintain the exons and remove the introns, we perform the process, which is called splicing. So clearly, what we want to do in splicing is to get rid of all these introns, say goodbye, we don't need them, and then the remaining exo, like if this, is the in, if this is the intron, splicing will take this out, and then another intron out, and then these exons will be, you know, kind of, uh, remember, they, they are already, they are separated, they are not really, attached to each other. So in splicing, we kind of patch them together such that the remaining part after splicing is one big coding region or like all of the exons are connected together. Splicing, by the way, is uh, done by snRNA or small nuclear RNAs, which actually are combined with other enzymes to form what we call the spliceosome complex. Now, after the spliceosome has performed splicing, then all of our mRNA or all of our hnRNA is coding. So there's no problem anymore about the content. However, that still doesn't change the fact that the five prime and the three prime regions are kind of, you know, um, uh, uh, have the propensity to be destroyed by the nucleases. So we need to do something about them. Specifically, at the five prime end, which again, um, I, I mentioned a few recordings ago, imagine the five prime as the head part or the, you know, the, 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 the uppermost part of the strand, we put a cap on it. So like, right, if we think of the five prime end as the head portion, 
uh, you put a cap on the head. You wear the cap on your head, so it makes sense. Or maybe if I I mentioned this also before, imagine the other end, the three prime end, is like the rear portion of your body. Um, at the rear or at the back end, you put some kind of tail, and the process here is called polyadenylation. So by capping, what we're actually doing is adding this cap, which is comprised of uh, uh, a methylated guanine at seven with three phosphates. So this is basically um, uh, seven methyl, right? Seven CHT, seven methyl GTP, guanosine triphosphate. This is our cap. So this is not the usual G. This is G with an extra methyl. And that methyl actually allows the GTP to be immune to nucleases. That is, if the nuclease can recognize and destroy a normal G, it cannot recognize or destroy a methylated form of that. So in that case, the cap renders the five prime end protected. Okay, now for the three prime, polyadenylation means we're gonna add so many ACE or adenosine groups here for uh, eukaryotes or mammals, it's around 200. Uh, uh, it's shorter in other organisms like yeast, I believe, but regardless of the count, it's a long one. It's made up of many, 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 many molecules of adenosine. So since it's a lot of adenosine, it's polyadenosine or poly A and tail. Okay, because again, you could imagine the three prime area as the rare part of the strand. And the thing is, the poly A tail is not immune to hydrolysis like the 7 methyl G cap, but since it's kind of long anyway, uh, uh, you can think of it as like uh, uh, a ticking time bomb or like uh, uh, a fuse, right? That uh, eventually this long tail will be cut down portion by portion, but hopefully, um, before all of the poly A tail is depleted, the uh, RNA must have already went to the ribosome because once it goes to the ribosome, it is gonna be protected, okay, uh, from the nucleases once again. And therefore, what do we need to remember? The three major post-transcriptional modification processes are one, splicing, two, capping, and three, polyadenylation. We need the splicing because we need to get rid of the non-coding regions, we don't need them. And we need to do the capping and the polyadenylation because we want to protect the five prime and the three prime ends respectively. And if you perform those three post-transcriptional modifications, what we now have here at the end, all of this with the cap, with the entire exon or the coding region and the polyatyl is the full-fledged messenger RNA or mRNA. And thus you can kind of assume that the HNRNA the one with the introns and the one without the cap and the one without the tail is the premature, you could say, it's not yet ready to go out of the nucleus, right? But once you have done all of these processes, all of the things inside are coding and it's now protected at both ends. It's now kind of mature because it's prepared and ready to go out to the nucleus. I mean, to the cytoplasm and finally reach the ribosome where Translation, which is the last step of the central dogma, will happen.